what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back again to new video guys. I'm here with a special guest guys. My pastor, my friend, my counselor guys, my guardian. He's a lot. <laughs> I'm very proud he's here. I'm very happy he's here with me. What's up, Silas? My name is Silas, Pastor Silas, and I'm here with the Perseverance. Yep. Today guys, this is a special video. The Throne of Allah mind-blowing this was recommended a lot of you guys will recommend a lot of video on my instagram page and we'll say we should give this a try and i brought my pastor here to clarify things with me that's we're going to check this out together you know how it is guys let's give it a try All the praise is for Allah, who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creation, while he is also the all compelling. He is the only one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death, while death has no effect upon him because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things, and there is in reality no power and no strength, no influence to cause benefit or detriment except through him. It is he who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and the speculative, the earth and all that is on it and everything that is in it. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets, alayhim salam, with the common message of strict monotheism which simply means that there is absolutely no one worthy of worship no one worthy of our obedience except the almighty the one the absolute and who has no partners the earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent those messages we know have changed and even the prophets who brought them their names are now lost we just know in general because Allah told us in the Quran وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ I've sent to every nation a messenger calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false gods. This essential message has been preserved in Islam in a way that it was never preserved before. Not because 
the message was different because it was the same message. But because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad wasallam, So therefore that message now had to be protected. It had to be preserved in a way none of the earlier messages were preserved. I will relate this, what you say you have come to know 40 years back and what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book which I read, the glorious Quran. It's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30 which says, Avalam yaral lazine kafru. Do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda ka natarat kanfutak nahuma that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. What you're talking about, the Big Bang. I try to imagine compressing a spring. I push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring. And when I let it go, it bursts out, it bursts out, it bursts out. The creation of the universe, which you came to know 40 years back, is already mentioned in this book, the glorious Quran, 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that in the Quran? So the atheists will say, Maybe someone wrote, maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's a guesswork. A human being, regardless of who they are, or where they are, or what they do, will have this curiosity. They'll want to know, why am I here? How did I get here? And do I have a purpose? And if so, what is it? The only one who would really be able to answer that question would be the Creator Himself. If there is a Creator, it would be up to Him to tell us why we were created and what he expects from us and what this life is really about. Allah has shown the people from the time of Adam until right now has shown the people what he wants from them. And it's a very simple thing. And that is that worship be for him alone without any partners. In fact, we know this life to be a test from Almighty God. That's why we're born and that's why we die because there has to be a beginning and an end for us to be tested on. The next life, after this life, no one will ever die again. A bad person or a good person, both are brought back and they continue to live in the next life, either in good shape or not so good shape, depending on how they did on the test. The worship of the God of Abraham. That was what was taught by these prophets. The Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. We're talking about the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We're talking about the Lord of the entire universe and beyond. The entire universe and beyond. You know, we live in this dunya and we are fascinated with this dunya which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has created in a beautiful manner. We're fascinated. There are over billions of people which live on this dunya at this moment in time. Over six billion people that live on the dunya at this moment in time. This dunya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big that there is space in this dunya for billions and billions and billions or more people. But what is this dunya in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created out there? This dunya is insignificant. This dunya is meaningless to Allah. It means nothing. It is worthless. So worthless, compare it with the sun. The sun is one star. You know more science than me. You'll be able to tell me better. Take this planet Earth and you place it inside the sun and you will be able to place 1.3 million Earths in the sun. 1.3 million Earths in the sun. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. The sun is one star, one star. There are stars out there which are millions of times bigger than the sun. You need, you tell me this, that you need millions and millions of stars to make one galaxy. And then you tell me this, that there are zillions of galaxies out there. Let me tell you on top of this, my friend. After this, whatever you see above, whatever you see above, when you raise your head 
and you look above, whatever you see above, the zillions and zillions and zillions of galaxies, let me tell you, this is everything there is within the first heaven. Everything there is within the first heaven. And Allah is the creator of seven heavens. Seven heavens. And the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is 500 years. You know, the distance that can be covered in 500 years, at what speed? Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. But it will take 500 years to get from the first heaven to the second heaven. 500 years from the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. Every time it will take 500 years. After the seven heavens, You all read the Ayatul Kursi. You all know the Ayatul Kursi. After this, you have the Kursi of Allah. You have the chair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know these seven heavens that we've just talked about. In comparison to the Kursi of Allah, they're non-existent. They're meaningless. Rasulullah has given an example in a hadith. Just to... Give us a little bit of understanding with regards to the seven heavens in comparison to the kursi of Allah. Take a ring from your finger, take it off, the small ring that you have, and place it, let's say, in a desert, the Sahara Desert. It's the biggest desert in the world. You know that ring that we take off from our fingers and place it in the Sahara Desert? What, what comparison is in between the ring and the Sahara Desert? Nothing. Nothing. The seven heavens is the ring and the kursi of Allah is the Sahara Desert. After the kursi of Allah, you have the arsh of Allah. You have the arsh of Allah. Again, Rasulullah has given, has explained, so just so that we can understand. Take the ring, place it in the desert. This time, the ring is the kursi and the arsh is the desert. What is the kursi in comparison to the arsh of Allah? Nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth. My friends, then you have the Lord of the arsh and the kursi. He is beyond the size of Allah. Who Allah is, what Allah is. The greatness of Allah is beyond the comprehension of my little mind. This is the being that you and I are messing with.
do you think about it? Well, <laughs> in light of what we're saying, just that these are all features of God in the Bible. Yeah. They are yeah, definitely talking about our God. They definitely because uh, there's no all the whole features sovereign God, the one who um, his wisdom is beyond searching. Yeah. It's, it's our God. Bible. It's our God. That's our God. Just that there was something striking that really I really want to make very clear in this. It's in Acts Acts 4. Acts 4 verse, verse 12. Acts 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name on under heaven given mm. among men whereby we must be saved whereby we must be saved there is no there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and um i remember in the, the story in the, in the lifetime of jesus when he came to earth jesus spoke about the fact that no man can come unto the father except by me yeah the true revelation of the father if you want to know what the father looks like you have to look at jesus the true revelation of the father now nowhere in the bible do men just stumble on the knowledge of god god introduces himself to them even when God met Moses on the mountain and Moses was trying to, you know, I want to know you, God, I want to know you, God, he was asking several questions. God said, okay, I will just let you see a glimpse of my back. That glimpse that Moses saw was so, was so, so much glory that when Moses came down to meet his people, the children of Israel, they had to use a veil to cover his face. He was shining with glory. So to truly know God, to truly know God, it takes having Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior first because he's the way to knowing the Father. Mm. A normal man can know about God. It's based on physical things. The best a normal man, a man who is not a spirit, who is not born again, can know about God is based on uh, physical things. But beyond that, there is a knowing of God that you can get to, and that is by the Spirit. Hmm. There's something here. Yeah. Um, hey, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Okay. But ye are not in the flesh, mm -hmm. but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because mm. of sin. But the spirit life, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Mm. So the spirit that raised Jesus is a quickening spirit. Mm. It's a spirit that... <laughs> oh God, thank you, Jesus. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is a quickening spirit. And he said, if that spirit dwells in your mortal bodies, it will quicken you too. So there's even a possibility of not being afraid of death because yeah. you have the spirit of God at work. Anyway, that's not even where we are going to. My, my, I'm trying to stress the point that if you will assess the Father, if you will know the true nature of God, one person is Jesus. Now, if you will assess the true nature of Jesus, which is the means to the Father, it is by His Spirit. These three walk hand in hand. Let's go to First John. First John chapter 4. Book of First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. 6 to 9. Let's go. 
This is, the, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For they are three that bear record in heaven. Mark it all. Three that bear what? Record in heaven. Let's go on. The Father. Which is the God. God the Father. Yeah. Uh -huh. God the, the Word. God the Son. And the Holy Ghost. God the Spirit. And these three are one. Is it me? Am I the one saying it? No. Okay, let's go on. Verse 8. Verse 8. And they are three that bears witness in it. Mm -hmm. The Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the water. Mm -hmm. And the blood. And these three agree, agree in, one. in one. Three bear witness in heaven. Three bear witness. The in Father, heaven. the Word, which is Jesus, because the Bible said, in, "Let's go to, let's go to, let's quickly." We'll come back to this one. John chapter one, quickly. John chapter one. John Before chapter Jesus. one. John chapter one, verse one. Okay. John chapter one, verse one. Verse one. In the beginning was the Word, uh -huh. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh -huh. So, first of all, let me establish something. In the beginning was the Word. Talking about in the beginning, the Word, which is Jesus, had an independent existence. Mm -hmm. Number two, in the beginning was the Word, independent existence. Number two, the in the, and the Word was with God, corporate existence. Mm -hmm. Number three, and the word was God, God, inseparable existence. Number one, in the beginning was the word, independent existence. The word existed independently. Number two, and the word was with God. Number two, corporate existence. The word existed with God. It was in a Godhead. It was in a, I don't want to put it a carcass, but it was in a, he was in the Godhead, let's look at the Godhead. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, which is the Godhead. And number three, the Word was, was God. God. Inseparable existence. Now let's go on verse 2. It says, Same was in the beginning with God. Mm -hmm. All things were made by Him, mm -hmm. and without Him was not anything made. Did he say something? They say, Well, all things, things were made by Him. Now we are going to who they are talking about here, because as of now, some people don't still get what we are talking about. Let's go. Verse 3, all things were made by him, mm -hmm. and without him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Mm -hmm. He was not that light but was sent to be a witness of the light. So already at this point, someone would think that they were talking about John, but now when he read, and, and when the person read to see, the person was like, ah, it's John they're talking about. Yeah. Now he now went to say, this was not that light. Yeah. This one is just someone that is coming to, to announce. Be a witness. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. Then verse 9, that was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the word was made by him, and the word knew him not. Mm -hmm. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the mm -hmm. word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 3 16 says, What for God so loved the world that he gave his only word. begotten son. What begotten son? Where did he begotten here? Only begotten of who? So that we can establish that the word in this first John is talking about Jesus. Yes. So he said, There are three that bear record in heaven the Father. The, the word, the son, and the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit. And these three are what? One. One. Now, on earth here, there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. These three are green one. Now, what is the meaning of this, that the father, these three bear witness in the earth? Meaning, there are three grounds to establish the testimony of the son of God. Because this particular... Um, 1 John chapter 5, from verse 6 to, I think, um, 
from verse 6 to 12, talks about the revelation of the Son of God. Mm-hmm. Now, there are three that bear witness about Jesus Christ on the earth here. Which is what? The Spirit, the water, and the blood. What is the Spirit? The Holy Spirit. We'll come to the Holy Spirit. Now, let's start from the water. When Jesus was going to be baptized in River Jordan by John the Baptist, the Bible said, when Jesus went into the water, as he submerged into the water, praying, as he was praying, and he went into the water to be baptized by John, the Bible said that what? The heavens opened. Yeah. When the heavens opened, there was a proclamation from God the Father, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes. It's in Luke. You can go on. It's in Luke. It's in John. And then God the Father screamed an alarm and said, This is a beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Bible said, A dove rested on Jesus' head. Now, that water, that baptism of water, was a witness. Because it's, it's, it's known, it's proven that when God made that statement, it, everybody, it was a very audible voice. voice. It wasn't a voice that it just Only on Jesus' head. head. Everybody. So that's where. Bear witness in the earth, water comes in. Yeah. That water baptism was a witness that Jesus is the Son of God. Number two, we come to the blood. When Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, the Bible said, when they pierced his side and then blood gushed out, and then he. The Bible said, if we, let's, we can even go to, or let, let's, let's just leave it for sake of time. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Bible said, at a certain point at the crucifixion, the clouds changed. I don't know if if if, if, if your yeah, Bible says we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, true. The Bible, the, the Bible says the clouds changed, and then a particular soldier said, "Indeed, this man is God's child." That was when the blood spilled from his side. Mm-hmm. That blood spilled was a witness because his because his blood was spilled. That blood was a witness to the earth that he is the Son of God. Then number three. Now, the reason why we are going this far is because, for instance, for the people that were at the baptism when Jesus was being baptized, mm. they received that witness. Two, people that were there when Jesus Christ was going to be crucified, when he was crucified, they received that witness. Then the Spirit is for those that were not able to experience the water and the blood. Those that were not there, for you and I now, that were not there when that witness about Jesus as the Son of God was made by the water baptism. Mm. When that witness as Jesus as the Son of God was made, uh, let's let's look at that that blood one. Let's just just quickly. Luke chapter twenty three, verse forty four. Okay. Luke twenty three forty four. Twenty three forty four. <clears throat> and it was about the sixtieth hour, and there was a, there was a darkness over all the earth until the night hour and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst mm. and when jesus had cried with a loud voice he said father into their hands i commend into their hand i commend my spirit and having said to us he gave up the ghost now when the cent- when the centurion saw that so that was done. He glorified God, saying, Certainly, this, this was, was righteous a righteous man. A witness to the Father, he is the Son of God. Hmm. Let's go on to verse 48. And all the people that came to gather to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. Let's leave it there. So, the centurion here, the centurion here, let's open, let's, 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 uh, I think let's read, let's read Mark 15 39. Mark 15, 39. That's the last one we read because there's a six. Mark 15, 39. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. He didn't just say to himself. He, he, he said it aloud. Going back to our first John that said what? There are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. blood yeah. The spirit, the water, and the blood. So we have established here now that it was after he was pierced, when the blood spilled out to the earth, that blood sacrifice, that sacrifice on the cross, which was a blood sacrifice, it was made known that this is the Son of God. 
Then now, the third, the, third, the third witness is a spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. That's the person that has been given to us. That did not witness when that water baptism happened, where God announced him as the Son of God. Where God also used that centurion to announce him as the Son of God. Now, that's where the Spirit comes in. The Spirit is that one that will now reveal to you that actually Jesus is the Son of God. Now, the joy of the whole thing is that, as that when that, that, whatever, that thing happened, the spirit has not been given to the earth yet. Mm -hmm. Now we have a better advantage that we can also even experience that, how that water baptism happened. We can have a knowledge of it. How the blood, that mm -hmm. blood announcement, we can have by the spirit. That's why in this scripture, the spirit came first. But according to the happening, it was the water, the blood, and the spirit. Mm -hmm. So these are the three that bear witness. And these three agree in one. They agree in one. So it's still coming down to the fact that the Holy Spirit first convicts a man that he needs Jesus. Then when the man accepts that conviction, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in that man. As he dwells in that man, he begins to do a work in that man. He begins to do a work in that man. So that's just a little... Thank you very much for breaking this down. This was very... This was a full video. I think it's probably more than 13 minutes right now. And I know there's a lot more to be said. And because of time, we got to reach here. And I respect the... Who is Allah. I love the breakdown. And it was yeah. kind of like talking about God, mm. about Savior. Mm. I love that. I love how you broke it down for me. For me to understand. This was really amazing. Uh, comment down below your thoughts. Subscribe to this channel, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all